Cross Life is becoming a praying church. Amen. A church that won't pray is like a military that won't fight. Pretty much useless. It becomes then a social club. But I know that you pray. I know you pray for me. I know that I pray for you. I know that we pray for one another. I praise God for that. I want us to close our eyes and remove all distractions. And I want us to spend some time in the presence of the Lord. Not asking for anything. Because that dominates most of our prayers. Instead, acknowledging Him. Recognizing Him. And giving Him praise. Holy God, Heavenly Father, exalted high above the earth, the earth is your footstool and the clouds are the dust of your feet, according to the book of Nahum. We acknowledge you, Lord of all, Lord of all, Lord of all, completely in control. You are the King of all kings, and you are the Lord of all lords. You are Jehovah, you are self-existent, and there is none like you. I need you, Father, for my very next heartbeat. But you are Jehovah, you are self-existent. You need nothing or no one to exist, for you are Alpha and Omega. You have always existed, you have always been. You are the first, and you are the last. Whatever you start, you finish. Hallelujah. And you make no mistakes. Hallelujah. Church, I invite you as I pray and as we pray and different people come up and pray to be participants in this prayer, not spectators. If I say something that you agree with, hallelujah, you can shout hallelujah, you can shout glory, and you can shout praise the Lord. You can put your hands together and you can praise the Lord that way. You can stand to your feet or you can kneel to your knees, hallelujah. We're just going to spend a few moments acknowledging who he is and all he has done and what he means in our life and his mighty name, hallelujah. When we say you are almighty, Lord God, we acknowledge that you lack nothing. You lack nothing. Your name is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. El Shaddai, you are the all-sufficient one. You are the God of more than enough. My God is not broke, church. My God is not broke, neither is your God. He's not broke, nor is he broken. Hallelujah. His name is El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. The God of more than enough. Say it. More than enough. Say it again. More than enough. One more time. More than enough. Hallelujah. He does not come so that we could just survive. He wants us to thrive. It's in his name that we thrive. His name is El Shaddai, the more than enough God. He wants you to thrive, hallelujah. Thrive in grace, thrive in mercy, thrive in love, thrive in forgiveness, thrive in peace, thrive in abundance, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because we are billboards for Jesus Christ. The world looks at us and we may be the only Bible they ever read, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that you sent to live in us and dwell in us hallelujah to lead us and guide us in all truth thank you for the holy spirit that says don't touch that and thank you for the holy spirit that says touch that lay hands on that hallelujah we thank you for your holy spirit we praise you lord for the church the original church in the book of acts that met to encourage and edify one another and we've come into this place and gathered in your name to not only hear from your holy spirit father god but to edify and encourage one another whether it be with a hug a smile a handshake or a word of encouragement if we do that father then we have fulfilled the purpose of the church to edify and encourage one another lord we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise for your son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ that makes today even possible. Amen, church. The blood of Jesus Christ that makes today possible. If it were not for the blood of Jesus Christ, we would not even be here today. We thank you for the blood, Lord. We thank you for the blood, mighty God. We thank you for the blood, almighty God. We thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood. We praise you for the blood. 
Lester, come and help me pray. Give the Lord some praise. Give him some praise this morning. He's been so good to you. Just give him some praise. He's been good to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for uh, for everyone in this room. Yes. Father God, thank you for your mercy. Father God, thank you for your grace that you bestowed upon everyone here. We didn't deserve your love, but you gave it to us freely anyway, Father. Every time I think about your love, Father God, it, it puts me to my knees and it humbles me so much, Father. I can't believe how gracious you are, how beautiful you are, Father. Father God, I just want to lift your name up above all names, the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the end. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. Father God, you wrote, you wrote our names in the book of life, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Father God, I just want to lift this church up to you. Father God, you reach into our lives. And you show us who we're supposed to be. How you see us, not how we see ourselves. Father God, thank you so much. We could never have done this on our own, but you did it for us. For that, we'll ever serve you. In Jesus' name. Father, we continue to give you glory and praise. Lord, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, the name of the Lord shall be praised. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your holy Bible. We thank you for your word, your masterpiece. Hallelujah. That says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But... His delight is in the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in that law does he meditate day and night. Hallelujah. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for guarding us and shielding us and defending us. Thank you that your name is Jehovah Sitkanu. You are our righteousness. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Father, we thank you for leading us and guiding us in truth, not only by your Holy Spirit, but by your Holy Bible. Hallelujah. We thank you for the masterpiece. We thank you for the guide for life. Hallelujah. We thank you for each person that's here today, Father God. We thank you for the valleys that you've brought them from. We thank you, Lord, for the storms that you've carried them through. Hallelujah. We thank you for parting the Red Sea in their life. Hallelujah. And making a way where there seemed to be no way. I look at this congregation and I know these families, Lord, and you've made a way where there seemed to be no way in so many of our lives. You've done things that only can be explained as God and God alone. Hallelujah. Because in the natural it would never happen. But in the supernatural all things are possible. Hallelujah to them that believe. And not only believe but believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the blood of Jesus Christ that makes it all possible. We praise you Lord from the rising of the sun today. Let not the praises depart from our lips. Hallelujah. And when we lay our heads down tonight we can say look what the Lord has done look what the Lord has done we praise you Lord for what you do on a regular basis in our life we give you glory and praise and thanks and honor hallelujah brother Orlando will you join me up here and to give the Lord praises for which he is worthy in Jesus mighty name father we continue to give you the praise that only you are worthy of I don't want to look to my left or to my right but keep my eyes on Jesus the author and the finisher of my faith the rock hallelujah my cornerstone my helper in the time of need. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Um, what's been on my mind, uh, you know, for the longest time is, uh, I guess because I've been in church for a long time, I've, I've seen the di downward spiral our country is going in. And, uh, and way back in the 70s when I first got saved, and they were teaching us uh, eschatology, which is end times. And, so I've always kept my mind uh, aware of that and try to be as uh, knowledgeable and up to date as in everything. And uh, what the Lord has spoke to me uh, eight years ago when Obama was elected was he was going to expose everything. He was going to expose the depths of the corruption of this world. And he was going to 
And when he does that, when he did that, for the last uh, 10 years, I've been interceding for our, our nation and our church. And even Pastor Eric has mentioned several times that what you see out there in the, the so-called church is not, it's not genuine. It's a, it's a form of godliness. It's, it's lukewarm and laudish and it's powerless. And I'm so glad to be part of a, the remnant church that believes in the power of God. And because I believe that, I expect, uh, you know, I, I expect to be, see, see this church as where miracles become commonplace. And you, and you walk in here and you're going to sense the presence of God. This is what I'm praying for. And I think, uh, well, to, to, uh, to detract a little bit, I think that the uh, election of Trump was just uh, miraculous. And it was uh, giving God giving us a second chance. We were, we were going downhill so fast that it would have been over if uh, God had not interceded. But there were people who uh, humbled themselves and acknowledged the wickedness of this, uh, of this nation. So everything is being exposed. And I could share some things that will sicken you, but I don't know if you could handle it. So I thank God that he has given us a second chance, that he's going to perform miracles in our nation. He's going to use us as his body. We're going to be his hands and feet, and we're going to see some mighty things. Even though sin abounds and love grows cold, his church will get stronger and stronger. His light will be upon us, and he's going to use us in the most miraculous way. So you need to expect that. And just continue to pray for that because uh, we're in for some uh, great tribulation. But the church is, a all, you know, we serve an almighty God. He's gonna, it's just going to be wonderful. So praise him and uh, expect, uh, as Pastor been talking about, expect uh, trials, tribulations, hardship, persecution. But at the same time, expect God's glory and his power to be Praise him for what he's going to do. We're on, we're just, you know, just allow him to transform you and, uh, and to be used. And uh, uh, what a privilege it is to be uh, his servants. And uh, Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's no longer us, that we that live, but Christ that lives in us. And we, we bear the cross. And we will not turn back. And our, all our hopes and expectations. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. If there's anybody that says, I just need to come and use that microphone and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I want to pray a prayer of praise. I want to bless the Lord. I don't want to leave anybody out. But if there's a prayer of praise on your lips, feel free to come now. Would you all stand together, please? Amen, 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 amen. Amen. I want you to turn and greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't know somebody, introduce yourself. Welcome to Cross Life. God is good and his mercy is everlasting. Lauren, I need you up front, sister. Lauren.
praises to your name. Oh, Lord, come on, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Yeah, come on, lift it up. I sing praises to your name. give glory to your name. Come on, church. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, your name is so great, Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, Lord. I give glory praises to your name. Come on, church, you can do it. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. For you are worthy, Lord. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praise this morning. I sing praise What a mighty name, church. What a name. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Father, we gather in this place this morning and we praise the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When we mention the name, demons flee and they tremble. Hallelujah. For they know who the creator is. They know who the almighty one is. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Hallelujah. It's in that name, Jesus, that we come this morning. Jesus, we come in your name this morning. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, 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 what a mighty name. What a precious name. What a powerful name. Jesus, we love you this morning. You loved us first, but we love you this morning. You loved us first, but we love you this morning. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we come in your name. Jesus, we gather in your name. Jesus, it's at your name that seas are parted. Hallelujah. And demons flee. Hallelujah. And fears are calmed. Hallelujah. And worries are calmed. It's in the name of Jesus this morning. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we gather in this place. There are so many reasons not to come to church. But there's only one reason we gather, and it's the name of Jesus. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy, church. Give him praise. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus, what a mighty name. Jesus, what a mighty name. Jesus, what a mighty name. Jesus, what an awesome name. Jesus, what a healing name. Jesus, what a powerful name. Jesus, hallelujah, what a comforter you are. What a comfort you are. What a friend you are. What a friend you are. What a friend you are in Jesus. What a savior you are. What a savior you are, Jesus. What a savior you are. What a savior you are. Full of mercy, full of grace, and full of patience. Hallelujah. Jesus, what a mighty name. 
This morning we lift up our brother Lamb as he comes and as he opens the masterpiece and as the Holy Spirit speaks through him. Father, we give you our brother Lamb. We thank you for him. We thank you for his ministry to the body of Christ. And especially we thank you for his ministry at Cross Life Family Worship. Father, we thank you for your servants. We thank you for the change that you've made in our lives. We thank you for the change you've made in Lamb's life. We thank you that he's not the person he used to be. We thank you, Lord, that you have raised him out of a pit. Hallelujah. And you set him on a high place. You take him out of miry clay and you put him on a solid foundation and on a rock. Lord, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We thank you, Lord, for the stability and the single-mindedness of our brother Lamb as he comes this morning and he opens this masterpiece to us. Lord, whatever you say to us, our answer will be yes. Our answer will be yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, have your way. Yes, Lord, have your way. You who changes not is always making changes in us. So this morning, you who changes not, we invite you, Lord, to make a change in our life, in our homes, in our relationships, in our finances, in our thoughts, in our actions. Change us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. We give you all the praise this morning and all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, church, praise the Lord one more time. Praise him one more time. Come on, Brother Lamb. Praise him one more time. Praise him one more time, for he is worthy. Hallelujah. And when you're done praising him, you may be seated. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Amen. And his mercy endureth to all generations. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Testing. Okay. Father God, I asked uh, that you use me to convey the words to the brethren, Lord. Uh, I ask more of you and less of me. Um, although, this, although this is prepared, Lord, I know this message came from you, Lord, uh, just with the confirmation in the body, even the topic that uh, Orlando and, and Brother AJ and, uh, and even uh, fellowshipping with, with uh, Brother Lester, uh, that, that this, this message is from you, um, Lord. I, uh, I thank you in advance for this victory. I thank you in advance for your word. Uh, that is everlasting. Uh, man's word, we can, we, we can always scrape bottom with the Lord, but with your words, it's infinite, Lord. I, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. So, Brother AJ mentioned uh, transformation. It's, uh, I'm comparing that to Jesus, and I'm falling short every day. <laughs> but um, even this, this introduction, uh, just know that I love you. I fall short of conveying that love. Um, you know, we have, like Orlando says, 2.4 billion Christians in the world, but I don't think they know the Lord uh, like most of you do. And this message within the church, um, I, I want to share you just as an introduction about, uh, and write this down, bowels of compassion. Okay? We think it's from a heart, but it's bowels of compassion. It's in the gut. And this is confirmation I spoke with Brother Reggie on this, and by the way, pray for Brother Reggie. He's moving his mom from uh, Michigan, from his hometown, all the way to San Diego. Yeah. So uh, pray for Godspeed. And the pastor's out of town as well, and also Brad is uh, in East Texas as, uh, as well. So let's pray for those brothers. And uh, I believe uh, uh, Becky is not here either, so let's pray for her. Um, Brother Matt, I didn't know you were coming today. What a blessing you are. <laughs> Please pray for him. This guy is a soldier for the Lord. Okay, he's, uh, I, I know he, I, I, this is not, not, uh, not him, but uh, he's on a 40-day water-only fast. Yeah, so after third week, it's all the Holy Spirit, so please pray for him. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, I, I, just for the introduction only, uh, turn to Philippians, and I will show you how 
a failure I am in comparing to Christ and even greeting you guys <laughs> here today. <laughs> okay. That is good. So let's go to Philippians chapter 1, verse uh, 2 to 4. Okay. And, and I believe when Paul wrote this, it's coming from his compassion, something that I am still learning. I don't verbalize things well. I can, Lester knows, and Brother AJ knows, I can talk to you about health care all night long, and I'll, I'll be very articulate. That's useless. I want to articulate better of God's Amen. word, right? Yeah. And, and just look towards Jesus for this, and I believe Paul was doing so when he, he wrote this. Uh, skip verse 1. It says, Grace be unto you, peace from God our Father. And from the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank my God every remem remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests for joy, Amen. for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. This is like a love letter. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but when you go to, uh, if you skip a little bit further, I just want you to remember this, uh, um, this one verse in 25. It says, yes, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you uh, Epaphroditus, my brother and companion labor and fellow soldier, remember that word, uh, but your messenger and he that ministered uh, to my wants. Story on that is uh, he got sick and um, it pained uh, that brother just to know that the church knew he was sick. He didn't want them to worry about him. Amazing. And he actually was sick unto death and and. Paul, uh, he didn't want that sorrow, so he prayed on the Lord to give him direction, sent the brother back to that church so that they can fellowship with him before he died. Uh, the, the brother himself was in sorrow from the church knowing that he was sick. He didn't want the church to know. He didn't want the church to worry about him. That, that, this is why I failed miserably by expressing my, 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 my love for you guys. Uh, I failed miserably earlier with... with um, <laughs> Well, Brother Leon, you know, uh, he, he asked me how I was, and my answer was just worldly stuff. Mm. You know, it, it's compared to what's going on with Paul writing a letter to the church, my gosh, it's like a poetry. It's a, it's a love letter. So I just want to, uh, to share, share that with you, and just keep note the word bowels of compassion. Um, it, it's not from here. It's actually from here, and, and Jesus had that as well, too, um, in, in verse... Um, and still in Philippians, uh, he, he asked uh, the brothers uh, in verse, uh, chapter, chapter 1, verse 8, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. So look, look toward Jesus uh, when you're studying that. And that's just the introduction, but um, uh, the, the word fellow soldier, um, I, I want to go to Genesis 24. Okay? A lot of people don't like the Old Testament, but um, <laughs> uh, in Philippians, before I also mentioned a lot about what Paul was doing. He tells everybody what he's doing. He's talking about furtherance of the gospel, and that was the main, main thing. But, you know, the gospel was usually a command. I mean, it's a commandment from Christ, the last commandment for us to go and share the gospel. Yet, um, I'll show you how it is and uh, how it was already set in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, the brethren, they had the Holy Spirit with them. So going back to what the pastor said about uh, uh, Philip, you know, imagine God says, go to the desert. Philip was married. Uh, I, I believe the only brethren that wasn't married was John at the time, uh, the apostle. Think about this. God says, go, and he goes to the desert. Is he going to say, tell his boss, you know what, let's, I got to go, or I got to go home to my wife? He just went. <laughs> and he caught up to that chariot through the power of the Holy Spirit. He was wearing sandals. There's no Nikes in, in those days. And so just, just by going, and, and I want to share that in the Old Testament with Genesis 24. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing on Genesis uh, 24, just the first 10 verse, because it's, it's long, and I'll give you the, the short version of it. Um, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant, of his house that ruled over all that he had. But I pray thee thy hand under my thigh. I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. 
But thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again to the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angels before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto the son, uh, my son from thence. And the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning that matter. And a servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose, went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. So he goes to, to the land, and um, uh, there's, there's a lot of key words in there. I'll, I'll go back to that. Uh, the story of Abraham and Isaac has a lot of faith um, content in there, just how Abraham was supposed to sacrifice his only son. In here, there's also faith as well, but I'll, I'll digress after that and get to the, to the meat uh, of, of this message. But when he came to the well, um, he, he, tells, he asks the Lord, he prays the Lord, Lord, the first woman that comes that's going to give me water if I ask and give water to my camels is, is going to be the woman that you choose. Right? So Rebecca comes and she gives him the water. Then she gives the camel the water. Now think about it. He took ten camels. But think about this as well. He's going to find, find Isaac a wife. And in those days, you have to give him something, right? So he's taking, and he's, 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 he owns all of his master's possessions. Gold, silver, camels, goats, whatever have you. So the 10 camels that he took is to carry that stuff, but he also had men for protection as well. So he had men with him, because you, know, you have to bring the treasure back, and, and you know, uh, the wife is the treasure now, and you don't want that to get stolen. So there were more, more than 10 camels. And he had a whole army with him, basically. Okay. So Rebecca gave water to all those camels and animals. Okay. And, and this is where the authority comes from, and not with the Holy Spirit, but authority of the Father, because uh, you know, in the New Testament, when Jesus died, he gave the Holy Spirit, uh, left the Holy Spirit to us. Here, he's getting direct authority from the Father. So he's praying to, to Father God in heaven, telling... Uh, Kind of like putting the golden fleece out, saying, hey, if she does this, that's the one that you're going to choose for me. And she says exactly, exactly what the servant said that she would. So she was a chosen one. Right? And then she brings, um, she brings the servant, no name, back to Laban, uh, her brother. And the servant tells Laban exactly what Abraham had instructed and exactly what he said, exactly what happened in the well. And think about this. Uh, Sarah had him at a very old age. And their kinsmen, they knew all that. So this has to be from God. It's like, well, who, who gives birth at 80 years old? All right, so th they know that Isaac was the only son. It's like, this had to be from God. So Laban goes, this has to be from God. So Laban brought him back to home and uh, had a place for stay, fed the, cam uh, fed the camels, washed the men's feet, gave them stuff to eat. The servant actually gave pieces of silver to Rebecca and uh, when, when Laban, the older brother, mentioned that this has to be from God, I have nothing to do with this, I, can't, I have no say, this is from God. He gave all the possessions uh, to that family. To, to the brother, to the father, to the mother, everything. So you know, that, I mean, think about it, they had all these camels to carry all this stuff. Okay. So here's where the, the brother says, can we keep our sister for like another 10 days? Just to say goodbye to her. Here's where the authority comes back again. He goes, do not hinder me. I need to take, her, I need to take my master's wife back. 
And then they asked Rebecca for her permission. She said yes, and they went. Okay. Now, I want you to look at verse, I marked it, um, 24, Genesis 24, 27. Okay, mark that. Genesis 24, 40, and mark that. Genesis 24, 48, and mark that. Genesis 24, 56, and mark that. And then the last one, Genesis 24, 60, and mark that. I remember Brother AJ, when he was uh, in worship, he said, uh, s someone can read the entire Bible and another man can stay in one verse and meditate that an entire year and get new revelations. So that verse I happened to meditate on well, um, was seek first uh, the kingdom of God and then the other verse was I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we know Jesus is the truth and the life. But here, uh, I focus on the first one which is the way. It's not just I am the beginning the alpha. It's not just a title. It's actually his name. The way. So what is the way? What is the way? So if you really think about it, go to, go to Genesis 24, um, 27. That's the first one that you marked. Okay. When the servant uh, noticed that this trip or the way wasn't planned by him, he gave glory to God. Okay. It says, and he said, Bless the Lord, God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Then you go to 2440. Okay. He said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angels with me and prosper thy way. And thou shalt not shalt take a wife of my son uh, of my kindred and of my father's house. Go to 48. I bowed down. This is when he realized that Rebecca was chosen, chosen one. I bowed down my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God, my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. Go to 56. And he said unto them, Hinder not, seeing the Lord have prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. So the, the, the party that they want to throw for her to, to, to say goodbye to her was a distraction, basically. It was a distraction. She needed to get home to the sun. And then go in 60. Uh, the last one I, I've marked. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, this is when uh, uh, Rebecca came home to, to Abraham in verse 60. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Which gate are they talking about? I'll get, I'll get back to that. So once again, uh, uh, those verses, uh, just, just mark them. They mentioned that. And Brother AJ, when you were gone, I was just mentioning how um, you said that uh, if a man can read the entire Bible, yet one man can focus in one entire verse and, and, and get revelations and revelations years after years, and that spoke to me. And so uh, uh, one of the verses is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is the way? What is the way? So in, in, in Philippians, Paul was telling his brethren what the way was, to share the gospel. Here, just imagine Abraham is God, we are the servant. Isaac is Jesus. The way is to find bride for Jesus. He deserves it, right? He died for us. Right? Now, how powerful this can be is that, um, you know, the love that they had for each other, going back to the, the introduction, imagine 12 apostles sharing their, the, you know, they're getting deployed to different places, if you will. You know, there's 2.4 billion Christians here in America, I mean, around the world, I'm sorry, but back then, there was very few of them, so they loved each other. 
They love each other to death. They had long suffering. They, 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 it's like it's poetry. They, they missed each other. And they, they knew, however, that what the way was. They knew that they had to be apart from each other. Okay? So they're soldiers because they're fighting for your souls. And in verse 60, it says that Rebecca is the seed that possesses the seed to the gate of the, of, of the enemy. What gate are we talking about? Okay, go to Matthew 16, 18. Okay, when Peter uh, was speaking to Jesus and Peter had the revelation that Jesus is Christ. Jesus says, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And, and Peter is Cephas means pebble or stone. The Catholics get this wrong. They think that he was the rock. But think about Jesus saying that, saying to thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, he's pointing to himself, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That's the gate in the Old Testament that they're talking about for Rebecca. She's the seed. The thing is, the most Christians in our life, prayer is, is, is a strategy as well. And the pastors shared this with me. Um, sharing the gospel is kingdom work. You're building his kingdom and even the gates of hell cannot prevail. You, the moment you're a savior, you're a soldier. There's two out outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Some, when it overflows, they, they get utterance in tongue. But the other sign is wanting to share the gospel. And, and let me share something with you that's absolutely amazing that happened to me. I, I call it milestones, and I share this a lot with, with brethren around me. But, um, and I couldn't plan this if I wanted to. Two weeks before I actually started to go out, uh, uh, this is another brother, Roger, came to, to a Banner Brothers meeting, and he was saying that he goes out in the streets. And, you know, I didn't know what that was all about. But um, roughly around that time, I was at home, and I was awakened around 3 o'clock, and I heard this crackling noise, like, like log uh, in a fireplace, just crackling. And I'm looking around, <laughs> I'm sitting up, looking around, I did not see anything. Like, where's that fire coming from? There, there was a fireplace right there. I'm like, well, where's that noise coming from? And all of a sudden, I felt heat. I'm like, okay, this is you, Lord. And I just laid down and went, poof. I can't explain it. I, there's, there's no words. I'm, I'm horrible with explaining words. And I'll get uh, to another story about Lester and the pastor uh, with explaining. And this is more confirmation. You know, the Holy Spirit has always been given to us inside of us the moment we're saved. But when it says he comes upon us, and brother as you shared this with me, imagine a pregnant woman, the baby's always in there, but the baby never, doesn't always kick, right? But think about the volcanoes in Hawaii, uh, Orlando. The, the lava is from the inside. It's actually, the, the, whole, the spirit's actually inside the soul. The soul's inside the body, the spirit's inside the soul, it's there. And when he comes out, it comes upon, just like the lava is, is upon the hillside of the mountains. And that was my really first experience of just overflowing Holy Spirit coming upon me. Next thing I know, roughly about two weeks later, is when I, I, I did my first uh, street witnessing at the dark train. Met Brother Todd and, 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 and Roger. Here's the thing, and this is where the compassion comes from. I used to be the one that thinks the guy in the corner with the sandwich thing calling Jesus and repent, that kind of thing. I'm like, this guy is crazy. But I came out there, I'm like, I cried. And I said, wow, those guys were my brothers. Amen. And that's the compassion that we need to have. That's just a, the little tiny part of it. I used to mock those guys. Going to Las Vegas, I used to mock that one. There's, there's only two guys here. <laughs> I used to mock those guys, but now I'm thinking, that's my brother. Brother Lester buys food. He, he has a guy in Longview, he buys food. Uh, for, for Dan, and the Dan stands right outside of, uh, of Planned Parenthood on the access road. He's homeless, but he loves the Lord. That's our brother. Right? So I just want to share that with you in terms of uh, uh, a different mindset. The reason, uh, 
how I got this is, is you, know, the, you know, the enemy lies to you. When, when we do work, uh, the enemy is lying. He's like, well, Lamb, are you trying to earn brownie points? <laughs> and, and, and it's not that. It's, believe me, I, Brother AJ knows this. When you serve, we're not doing it for ourselves, although the enemy would lie to you about it. Okay? The people that we're serving are actually blessing us. I am blessed because once we, our, our intent is to share the gospel, to glorify Jesus, Holy Spirit comes. So it was nothing I do. I mean, I was, I was driving around one time. I got lost and ended up in Mansfield and, and, and spoke to a lady uh, inside a hotel, which spoke Spanish only. So all of a sudden, I pulled up Google Translate and Pastor Joe, which speaks Spanish only, ended up on the phone later on and she was praying something and I was thinking, oh my Lord, she's giving herself to the Lord. <laughs> so I started crying and crying and crying while we're praying. I had I know nothing about Spanish. But after she was done, she said, gracias, hermano. Thank you, brother. I'm like, wow, she got it. All right. So when, when you, if you want to see the, seek the Lord's face, yeah, just go. Just go. That's what the servant did. So Abraham's the father. Father God, Jesus was Isaac. The servant is us. We're going to look for brides for Jesus. And guess what? He was blessed along the way. He was equipped. He got all these treasures from the Father. He'll bless you abundantly. I'm not talking about money-wise <laughs> as well, but he'll, he'll, he'll help you finances as well too. El Shaddai. But think about this. Brother AJ has been on 143 mission trips. That's amazing. And he has, does not have a worldly job, which I kick myself all the time. It's like, Lord, I need that faith. Right? And just reading Paul, how he addresses the brethren, I said, Lord, please give me that compassion. Right? Next time you see a guy in the middle of the road holding a sign up, repent, that's your brother. Amen. Yeah. I was ashamed of that. I was ashamed of him a long time ago. Yeah. It's amazing. That's our brother. He's fighting yes. for, for, for Jesus' kingdom. And I just want to share that in, in terms of, uh, of, of the fellowship, uh, every, all the points that you, you, brought, you, you brought up, Orlando, in, in your prayer as well. Um, kind of click w w with this. Um, so that's, that's my message that the Lord gave. Um, the reason why he gave me that aspect of it was I asked the question, Lord, I don't want these revelations to be about me. He'll, he'll give you different revelations to help you with things in your life as well, too. Right? I asked him, Lord, how can I glorify you? And so this just popped up at me. I, I would have no idea. I mean, how, how would you share the gospel in the Old Testament when Jesus hasn't died for us yet? But that's, that's me putting God in the box. Right? God's way outside of time. So he gave me that revelation. And um, uh, it, it's, it's been a blessing. Uh, he'll give things that you want or need to, 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 to equip you for this. And I'm, I'm not very good at verbalizing this, but let me share this with, uh, um, uh, uh, if I may, Brother Lester. We went to lunch, and we didn't know where to eat. It was a part of town that we're not familiar with. And so a, uh, a secretary at one of the offices told us, recommend us a place. And... We're both struggling with trying to be at the throne of God all the time, you know, and so, so imagine this light here is, is God, and we are, I am, the, 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 uh, you guys, and that speaker noise is the world, and, and I got the answer from the Lord when we were talking about this. Why can't we get away from that, you know, throwing it aside, but I couldn't verbalize it. And this is how great the Lord is. It wasn't meant for me to share. It's amazing. Because he gave me the picture, and I even told Brother Lester, I said, Brother, I, I don't know why I cannot verbalize this. <laughs> so, and the thing is, on that table, there was a candle, like an LED candle, a salt and pepper shaker. So I just grabbed the salt and the pepper, just not me doing it, Think about how we are the salt of the earth. So the salt happened to represent the body and the, 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 the pepper was the speaker. And I had no clue I was doing it. Right? And then Lester goes, why can't we get from this, away from this? And I had the answer, but I couldn't verbalize it. 
He didn't, he didn't want me to verbalize it. And then all of a sudden, I just moved the pepper sh- out of the salt to the other side of that candle. The Lord fights our battles. He's in between. This is the throne of God. This is not the throne of God. But that still doesn't do it justice because Pastor Eric happened to be studying on that subject on fear. <laughs> and he took uh, Suzette and, and uh, <laughs> Christian to skydiving. And that was the message. So you know the pastor is very anointed. Like he said the blessings on their side of fear. He's very anointed with communicating the word of God. Amen. It wasn't meant for me. And that's just the connection. That's just how the brethren are connected but with the spiritual thread. It's just amazing. Because after church, I mean, I was sitting back where Atlanta was, and Lester was here, and the whole message, I was thinking, Lester, you know, and he, he's probably laughing inside, right? And we're walking, bringing all the speakers outside. He has his pole. He goes, Lamb, I'm going to hit you with this pole. <laughs> because I couldn't realize. And I knew we were struggling with that message, and boom, the pastor had that message for us. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, how, how God works. And I just want to give all glory to Him. And, uh, and just remember, uh, even in the Old Testament, everything points to Jesus. If you read and think, Jesus, how is your face in this message? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Right? If you focus on heaven, you get earth along the way. If you focus on earth, you'll get neither. Yeah, that's the message. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church.